Hey, Tubies. It's Psychic Bob. Woo, well, here we are. It's Saturday. And you know what that means? It's time for our spiritualist class and seance. And I tell you, I'm so glad you're here. I've been doing readings all morning. It's now, what, about four in the afternoon. I'm finally getting a break, some time in to, to do this video. But I got to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have been coming out for private readings with me. It really does my heart good to know that so many of you are enjoying my work and that you're investing in a reading. You know, I always say a private reading is an investment in yourself. It really is. And I've been able to help so many of you. You know, in our class, we've been studying this wonderful book by Sylvia Brown, one of my favorite people, called Mystical Traveler. And some of you who have been calling have been telling me, Psyche Bob, thank you for this class because I'm discovering I'm a mystical traveler. And that's what I want. I want people to understand who they are, where they're going, you know, what it's all about. And I think this is a wonderful book. And even if you don't want to be a mystical traveler, you know, as Sylvia says, you don't have to be a mystical traveler. You can still be a great person and have a great life as a life mission entity. But some of you are saying, Bob, I've met that turning point. I'm going to be becoming a mystical traveler. And I'm very excited to be able to confirm that for you and help you get that going. So if you want to get on my schedule for a private session, I still have a few openings for this upcoming week. Uh, give me a call. 703-825-3929 is my phone number. Put that in your cell phone. You know, even if you don't want to call for a reading right now, you might in the future. And wouldn't it be good to have Psyche Bob on your phone dial? So give me a call, okay? Or you can write to me at my official email, readings at robert-hickman.com. That link will be in the box below. And definitely visit my website, www.psychicbob.com. That's right. Anyways, I want to give a big shout out and say thank you to all of you who've been coming out. Also, if you weren't here yesterday, we had a great video. A lot of you have been giving me a lot of feedback. We talked about the mystical gems of the zodiac, of the astrological gemstones of the Western astrology. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check out yesterday's video. We talk about all about what's on this chart. And so many of you have been writing saying how much it helps you. Thank you. I'm glad that has. Anyways, before we get into all today's class and channeling, I got to show a special gift that I got. Got a wonderful package in the mail from a dear friend, Darlene Weinbrenner. She sent me a lovely little card. And I got to show you what, what she sent me here. Well, I opened the package already, and inside it is this beautiful, I thought it was a tapestry. And as I was looking at it, I realized that this was actually, uh, it's a pillow cover. And you know, Darlene, first of all, I hope you see this. Thank you so much. I did get it. You did get the right address. And um, this is wonderful. I've actually been wanting some Wiccan pillows to put in my house to put around. So this is a perfect gift for me. It's exactly what I've been wanting. I love it. It's soft. It's like flannelly and warm and cozy. And I love it. So I definitely am going to use this. I'm going to get a pillow to put in it. So thank you. Also, you know, that was just so nice. Well, then I opened my other thing and look what else I got. Oops, it's tangled up here. She got me a beautiful mystical Wiccan pendant. Isn't that lovely? It's the moon and it's got a pinnacle. And darling, I'm going to consecrate my jewelry on the altar tonight. So I have, I'm not wearing it yet because... I always do a ritual over my jewelry before I wear it. So this is going to get ritualized tonight. And I just think it's beautiful. I think it's absolutely lovely. You guys can see that. That beautiful pinnacle in there. Purple. And you know I'm crazy about anything purple. And the crescent moon. Very magical. I love it. My God, you're so kind. Well, you know, just when I think it can't get any better, my gosh, she always surprises me. And look what she got me. An amazing crystal ball ring and you know this is going to be wonderful look I can wear it on my finger and so I can take this when I travel this will be a great travel scrying device so next time I go travel we're going to talk about how to use the mystical crystal ball ring Darlene I love it thank you so much you're very very kind and I'm going to really appreciate these and enjoy them so thank you Do you know I'm a jewelry freak if it's got jewelry on it it's me 
Now she wrote me a beautiful letter, which which I'm not going to read as private, but lovely card. Thank you. So guys, this is so nice. Well, Darlene, thank you so much, Charlotte. I'm going to be calling you. Uh, anyways, I've been swamped under readings, but thank you. I love it. You know, speaking of jewelry and such, today I'm wearing my beautiful aquamarine pendant. And a lot of you have been writing, so say Bob, I want to get into channeling. What do you recommend? Well, you know, one of the things is, as I said in yesterday's video, let the gems help you. Aquamarine is actually interesting. It's the birthstone for, I was in March. Um, but you don't have to be a March baby to appreciate it. This is a beautiful cut aquamine set in silver. Again, it's from India. I buy all my jewels in India because I get them much cheaper than what they cost in America. And they do beautiful work, silver work. And This is an aquamarine. Aquamarine is a stone you want to try if you want to do channeling, particularly vocal channeling, because it resonates with the throat chakra and it opens up all that energy. So I like to wear a, an aquamarine when I do channeling. And we're going to do some channeling today. So if you want to, you know, improve your channeling, you might want to explore working with the gemstone aquamarine, okay? Anyways, what we're going to do, we're going to have our class first here. So we're going to continue. I want to do a little more reading from this wonderful book, Sylvia Brown, Mystical Traveler. Uh, I recommend you get a copy of this book. Uh, we've been going through it for the last few weeks, and I really love it. Now, we're up to page 42, and Sylvia's talking about, you know, making your covenant with God. And we're going to just continue on here on page 42 on the section called My Own Journey. And this is Sylvia Brown speaking about her journey towards becoming a mystical traveler. So let's hear what Sylvia has to say. She writes, My Own Journey. I think what finally made taking the oath an easy decision for me. Um, excuse me, let me read that. I think what made finally what uh, something I cannot read, I'm gonna be tongue tied. Well, we're gonna get through it. Sylvia, give us a hand, please. Will you channel through so I can read your writing? I think what finally made taking the oath, and she's talking about the oath to become a mystical traveler, an easy decision for me, although I still had some trepidation, is the fact that my second husband had been conned into investing in a crooked gold mining deal. I was so busy with my foundation that I really didn't have my mind on anything else but taking care of other people. I was forced into bankruptcy, instructed to make restitution to the other investors, and had to pay off a huge IRS bill. I'll never forget the judge telling me, I'm sorry, Mrs. Brown, but you're the only one making the money. That night, I went into my bedroom and said, God, you can take it all. Your will, but please just let me keep my foundation intact. Now, let's just stop there. See, what happened with Sylvia Brown is she got in a situation, she's talked about this on talk shows and stuff, where she and her husband put money into a gold mine. And supposedly what happened was the proper paperwork had not been filed. And it was then considered a federal offense, and the Securities and Exchange Commission came after her. Well, because the mine had been operating illegally, they charged fines against them, fines for improper paperwork, and then they took the mine, they seized the assets. And so even after seizing the assets, she still had like a, you know, I don't know, several hundred thousand dollar bill. So she ended up literally going into bankruptcy. And this was at the height when she was actually becoming very famous, okay? But despite that, she decided to give it all to God and take the oath. So that's what she's talking about, the oath of committing her life to, to being a mystical traveler. And she goes on, she writes, she says, I lost my house and almost everything I owned. I was also taking care of my parents, so it was vital that I settle the whole matter. I needed $2,200 for housing, so I had a huge garage sale. I made $2,300 and put us all in the same modest apartment complex. My husband and I separated and I eventually filed for divorce. Even though it was amicable, it was somewhat tragic in that we'd been together for almost 20 years. 
but as he admitted, it was his fault. In addition, he knew that I was devastated over the bankruptcy and only wanted me to be happy. Now, this is really fascinating because this was at a time when Sylvia was making quite a bit of money. She was already being on the Montel show. She was out there and she lost everything. And, and for Sylvia, you know, you're talking like, let me just give you an idea of the money she makes. She charges or charged $850 for a 20 minute reading. And she did about 10 readings a day. So you can do the math. She's making good money and she worked like seven days a week and did television shows and book sales. So she was making a few million a year roughly, but she lost every last penny and was scrounging up, trying to come up with $2,200. Now I tell you, that's a major fall, isn't it? But you know what? Through it all, she kept her focus on what's important, on God, on spirit, on service. And I think this is what really inspires me about her is that she could have just thrown it in, said it's all done, I'm washed up. But she kept working, kept praying, kept having faith. And she took on the calling. She said, you know what, I'm not just doing this as a job, I'm doing this as a sacred calling. And she continued her work. So she goes on, she writes, Although my second husband was not like my first, um, a divorce is a divorce and hard enough to go through. Happily, we've remained friends and I have forgiven him but I'm not sure that he'll ever forgive himself. Anyway, after telling mother and father God they could have it all, I began to wonder what the difference was between that and becoming a mystical traveler. I reasoned that becoming such an advanced soul could even help make my life better, and I was right. It seemed insurmountable, but day after day and month after month, I built my life back by doing 25 to 30 readings a day. Ooh, and I thought I was busy doing 10 a day. Ooh, I'm not going to complain. It wasn't the readings that wore me out. It was the worry that I wouldn't make it. But I did. People have asked me, if you're so psychic, why didn't you know all this was going to happen? And why didn't Francine warn you? The answer is simple. My gift has never been for me. And who's to say that without hitting bottom, it wouldn't have been harder to make my sacred commitment. After all, that's when I realized down to the very depths of my soul that God's will and mine are the same. Now, isn't that beautiful? You see, Sylvia lost everything. And I got to tell you, you know, as a targeted individual, I've been through something similar and I, I won't go into it all here, but I was financially devastated by the United States government and lost pretty much everything like Sylvia. And in the last few years, I've been able to rebuild my life. And, you know, I have all of you to thank because you've been part of it. But, you know, like Sylvia said, sometimes you have to go all the way down to come back up. And, you know, what's interesting is after that, that she went through that, her career skyrocketed. Now she was doing 25 to 30 readings a day. Can you imagine how much energy that took? I can do 10 readings a day, and that wears me out. Uh, but 25 to 30, whew, God bless her. But anyway, she rebuilt her life, and her fame came back, and she soared better than ever. And so I think that there's truth here, that when we work with the spirit world, they take care of us. Anyways, I just want to stop there and just leave that with you. We're going to now go to the part of our class today where we're going to do a demonstration of trance channeling. Now, I have to say this every week because I get letters. When I say that I am a trance medium, that is spelled T-R-A-N-C-E with a C. People write me where they said, what? Say goodbye. I didn't know you were transgender. I am not transgender. I was born a male. I've always been a male. I'm still a male. I'll die a male. I'm not becoming a trans person. So when I say trans, it's a C, not an S. Okay. And people said, do you have to, somebody wrote me and said, do you have to be transgender to do trans channeling? I said, no, no, no. It's trans. What that means is you go into an altered state of consciousness, a trans state. 
And when you're in an altered state, spirits speak through you. They take control of your body. And it looks a little strange, I, you know, I'll grant you, but um, it's not scary for me. It's actually very peaceful. But uh, I'm going to settle down and go into trance with a C, and we'll see what the, uh, the spirit people have for you. So I'm going to shut down the lights here. Give me just a moment. Okay, we've got our lights dimmed. When I do channeling, I like to have this just a softer light. That's just me. Every, every medium is different. But I think a softer light allows me to go into a deeper state of trance. So, you know, pull up your chairs here. We're going to have our little seance circle, okay? I'll see you when I get back. Oh, there we go. I think we're in the medium's body. Well, this is Fletcher. I hope y'all can be hearing me out there. You know, if we don't get the frequency right, we come through and it's like we're talking to the wind. You won't be hearing no voices. But it looks like we've got our medium's vibration stabilized. And I'm so glad to be here with all of you. You know, there's a lot of soul glow out there today. And when we look around the world, we can see those who are questing for the things that are of the spirit. And mind you, Listening to the way of the spirit is the path that you want to take. In the world, it's easy to get lost, all sort of tied up in things. I know that when I was a little young lad, I used to be ignoring my auntie used to tell me about spiritualism. I used to say, don't go to no time for none of that. I got a beer to drink and girls to chase. Well, I suppose I'm still doing that in the spirit world. But the difference is, at least I know that there's eternal life now. And, you know, over here we make our progress as we want to make it. Nobody in the spirit world will say, oh, you got to do this or got to do that. No, you're left to your own devices. But if you listen to the higher callings and the higher guides and the angels, you'll find that your life in the spirit world gets even more amazing. Just coming over here and realizing that there's life after death is quite a shock to a lot of people. I've helped a few souls over who came kicking and screaming and said, Oh, Fletcher, don't be telling me I'm alive and know that I'm dead. And I said to them, Well, if you're dead, how can you be sitting here with me? And they said, Well, I don't know. It's all a figment of my mind. I guess I'm dreaming it all. But after a little while, we leave them by and by. We let them sit in the field, you know, and look at the sky and think about their lives. And then they come to understand that well, maybe they really are alive, that there is life after death. You'd be amazed at how many souls I brought over here who'd be telling me there ain't no afterlife, there ain't nothing, but they're sure as day here in front of me talking. And we you know what I got to do is sometimes I just got to give them the word straight up and say, now get over your, your cockamamie nonsense. You know that there's a life after death because you wouldn't be talking to me if you wouldn't. You know, the funny part is some of me relatives when they died come over and I was sent to greet them. And they said, my heavens, what's Fletcher doing here? He's been dead 20 years. And I said, well, there you go, laddie, there. Don't you know that uh, your alive is as I'm alive? And, well, that kind of got them a little bit sobered up here. You know, some people, speaking of sobriety, some people die and they come over to the spirit world in a drunken stupor. You know, if you have an excessive drinking problem, it sticks on your soul. Oh, and you'll find yourself a bit lit when you come to the light. Now, you know, we always say, don't come to the light lit. It's not a good thing. But there you go. Anyways, we've got other people be wanting to speak, but I wanted to spend a few moments with you and say good afternoon. This is Fletcher. I'll be signing off. We've got to let others come through our medium. Greetings. My name is Alfred. I'm so fortunate to be here with all of you. There was a time when I found myself in the place of outer darkness. Understand that each day a soul may move closer to the light or farther from the light. 
It is your choice. And as Fletcher said, that there is no one in the spirit world who forces you to go one way or the other. Souls are not cast into hell as much as that they choose to walk their own way into hell. And so people will say, but I don't believe in hell. But I can tell you that there is not hell in the sense of an eternal damnation, a separation from God. This is not possible, for all children are veritable sparks of the divine. Your own soul carries the light of God. Your own soul, however, has free will. It can merge with the divine, with the infinite, or as we say, infinite intelligence, or it can choose to walk away. The choice is always yours. But for those souls who choose to walk closer to God's light, they will discover joy and peace and healing, not only in their earthly lives, but in the life to come. Make no mistake, there are many people on the earth who believe that the physical life is all that there is. They've been blinded by science and biological theory that says only material things are real. Anything else is a figment of the mind. It's true that much exists within the mind, but the mind is also physical. But the mind has the ability to interface with the spirit. The spiritual mind, the spiritual self, is where all truth and all light are. Even atheists occasionally glimpse that world, though they do not understand what they are seeing. For some of you, you've had experiences where you've been asleep and you said, I felt as if I left my body and I was in another dimension, another world, perhaps the spirit world or some call it heaven. It's true that most souls at night do leave the confines of the physical body and travel to the spirit world. If you've been having dreams such as these, Please know that we will assist you in your journeys. But for the spirit world to help you, you must seek our assistance and you must give permission. And so before you retire in the evening for your slumber, it would be do you well to say, spirit world, I give you permission to assist me. Help me to know the things of the spirit. Allow me to travel in my astral form into the spirit world. And if you give us this permission, we will gladly help you. Many souls find that when they leave the body at night, they have greater peace. The spiritual body is not limited as is the physical. It can travel across the cosmos in the blink of an eye. It can go anywhere in the world and see anything it desires. It can go to the highest of heavens or the lowest of hells. In the spirit form, you are free. And this freedom brings many people joy and peace. But understand that suicide is not the answer, for some say, if I could do this, then I shall kill myself and leave the physical body. If you create a state of trepidation such as suicide upon your soul, you will limit your ability to have freedom and travel. It is if you do this for a selfish reason, you're limiting your ability to move forward. Understand that the earth plane is a school and you come here to learn. And if you do not learn your lessons, if you exit the class early, shall we say, then you must go back and repeat it. Suicide always leads to two options, to a visit to purgatory where you will reflect upon your actions and then eventually it leads to reincarnation where you must again repeat the lessons that you failed to learn. So anyone who is listening and says, well, I shall commit suicide if the spirit world is so fine, do not make that mistake. To have the joy of the spirit world requires that you be in harmony with the spirit world. Vibrations of love attract realms of love. Vibrations of hate will attract you to realms of hate. Yes, there are dark regions in the spirit world where evil people dwell. They have hatred and viciousness and vindictive attitudes. And these souls find themselves in the lower realms where they fight and are tortured and clawed. You have heard the expression on the earth, people who claw their way to the top. This is often used for people who are very ambitious and hurt others on their way to success. Do you know that if these type of souls cross over, if they have not learned the lessons of compassion and love, they go to the realm where all the others around them are like them. They fight in, in violent and hostility. Yes, there are hellish realms in the spirit realm, spirit world. 
These realms are not often spoken of, and not many people on the earth care to speak of them. But it is a truth that must be heard. Like attracts like. So if you live your life in love, if you practice kindness towards your neighbor, if you practice friendliness and love, when you die, you will go to those realms, for that is your frequency and your vibration. If you're selfish and violent, you will go to the realm of violence. Know that your consciousness will create your reality in the spirit world. Fletch has asked me to vacate the medium's body. There are others who wish to speak. I thank you for receiving me. My name is Alfred. There we go. Greetings, my dear sisters Rose. Oh, it's such a blessing to be here with all of you. You know, I could not help but overhear Alfred speaking about the various realms of the spirit world. Yes, my dear, there are thousands upon thousands of levels of reality here. Some are more beautiful and some are more ghastly. Do, my dears, avoid the ghastly realms. Some of you say, Rose, I've been so evil and mean in my life. I know I'm destined for the hell realms. My dear, you'll only go to those realms if you want to. If you're hearing my voice and you're saying, Oh, Rose, I don't want to go there. Please help me. Well, the very fact that you don't want to go there already says that you're on the, the right path, the beginning of the right path, my dear. What you must do is each day cultivate a mind of love, a mind of peace, a mind that says I shall forgive my neighbour though they trespass against me. I shall help those in need. I shall reflect on the soul and its importance in my life. I shall choose the higher morality. Yes, I could cheat and steal from my neighbour, but better yet that I help my neighbour and together we shall make progress. This is the mindset you must have if you wish to move to the higher realms. The wonderful thing is that on the earth plane you're given many opportunities to make such advancement and all it takes is a little effort on your part. Do you know that for each human who seeks spiritual advancement there are thousands of souls over here, guides and angels, just waiting for the opportunity to serve. So the wonderful thing is that if you wish to make spiritual progress, you only have to let us help you. You oh, see, now some of you are going to say, Rose, you don't know my history. I've done horrible things. I've hurt people. I've stolen. I lied to my family. I've destroyed everybody financially. And yet here I sit. Is there any hope for me? Oh, yes, my dear. The fact that you can recognise your own failings and misgivings are what will bring you to the light. Do you know when I found myself in that place of purgatory, I kept having angels come to me. And even in my despair, they said, hey, Rose, we will take you over to the light. Because I had cultivated such a mind of selfishness, I pushed them away. And I said, I don't want your help. Go away, I don't need you, and who are you anyways? Do you see what a mind of hatred I had even in those times? Here I had died and fallen into purgatory, and even then the spirit world tried to help me, and I wandered over sixty odd years in that place of confinement and darkness, and I need not stay that long. You will only inhabit the purgatorial realms as long as you need to. If you find yourself feeling as if you're slipping already into purgatory or hell, then that means that you're starting to awaken. And the sorrows that you experience in the body are given to you that you might awaken to higher truth. And so, dear, do not be of despair. Do not self-condemn. No. Say, Spirit, help me. God, help me. Over here, infinite intelligence is a mind of all wisdom, clarity, and above all of that, that is love. And so if you will let love be your guiding principle, you will receive love. 
you'll see you only have to want love to receive it. And in turn, once you receive love, then you will give love. Many souls on the earth lack for the experience of love. Now, we're not talking romance and hearts and, and, you know, Cupid. No, no. We're talking about the love that says, I want to help my fellow man. I want to help those in need. That is true love. That is spiritual love. The physical love has its place, but this is not of which we're speaking now. We're talking about the love that sees somebody alone and says, I shall visit and be their friend. Oh, Perhaps you have a neighbour, you might say, you know, I know a lady in my neighbourhood, very old lady, no one visits her. Perhaps you could visit her, you see. This would be an act of love. And if you were the greatest of sinners and the greatest of evildoers, even you are given a chance to reform. The very fact that you're hearing my voice now means that you have been brought here by spirit today. You see, this medium has a contract with our world. And he said, Rose Fletcher... He said, please, all of you, Alfred, he calls on all of us and more. He says, bring to the seance today people that will be ready to move on the path of light and love. And we have called all of you. If you're here today, you've been called. You must, I don't remember any spirit voice calling it, but we've called you nonetheless, my dear. And so you are here. Mm -hmm. So take the love we bring to you and walk in the light of love. Let today be your day to begin again. You don't have to stay in the darkness of the evil. You must let the past go. You cannot correct it usually, and it's no point dwelling on it. You have today, so stop today with love. Call on us and we shall help you. Fletcher says our medium power is starting to wane, so we shall not tax him. But I do thank you, my dears, for coming here and allowing me to visit with you. Whenever I have the opportunity to come through our medium and speak, I'm very, very thankful. And I hope that you will call upon me. Oh, my dears, the power is starting to fade, and I feel myself going with it. But know that I send my blessings to all of you, and my love, and those of us in the spirit world will help you. Please remember to call upon us. Well, two bees, I tell you, I love having the chance to come here each Saturday and, and do trance channeling for you. And I hope that this has been of some help to you. You know, I always come back from channeling feeling so energized, so happy, so uplifted. And I think it's touching in with that other realm that, that really raises my vibration. I hope wherever you are today that you're having a, a blessed and a peaceful day. And I thank you for taking the time to join our class and our seance. Listen, if you get a chance, pop over to my website, www.psychicbob.com. I'll have the link below. Check out my books. I have a number of published books and I can't find them. I've moved them somewhere. But I have a bookstore over there, you'll see, and you can pick up my book. Particularly check out Messages from Rose. That's my book about my work with my spirit guy, Rose. I think you'll like that. And while you're there, if you want to think about getting on my schedule for a private reading, give me a call. 703-825-3929. I would love the chance to sit down with you. You know, a private reading, it's you and me one-on-one -on -one for a full hour. We cover everything. Past, present, future, spirit guides, messages from deceased loved ones past life information, your karmic links, what your mission is, all of that and more. And I'd love the chance to work with you. A lot of you have been calling and say thank you. And, uh, you know, a lot of you have been calling and say, Seggy Bob, I've been studying the mystical traveler. I think I'm there. Am I there? Am I really there? Is it possible? And I've been finding a lot of mystical travelers lately. So, yeah, it's there. You know, but you got to be ready for it and you got to take it seriously. And, you know, a spiritual reading will help you do that. So, you want to get on my schedule, give me a call and I'll be glad to work with you. Anyways, guys, thanks for being here. I love you. Keep it here at Spiritual. Tomorrow is Sunday, and that means we're going to have the witching hour. So be here at 8 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 
5 p.m. Pacific. If you're over in the UK, 1 a.m. London time, or in Germany, Paris, Eastern, you know, Western Europe, 2 a.m. So if you're a night owl and you're up late, come join us for the witching hour. Just come here to this channel and we'll be broadcasting live. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys then. Till then, listen, have a wonderful day, and may always, you all, always, 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 blessed be.